Rodolfo, in order to understand how brains function, you would ask us to imagine that this brain is emulating the external world, but the only way the external world can have significance is because we have pre-existing structures or, or mechanisms in our brain that will make sense out of that. Right. So, so how, how does that work? Well, so basically what has happened is evolution has allowed certain aspects of reality to become important. And uh, it has uh, had to do with, uh, let's say, we have to feed. So we need uh, an, an olfactory system that can recognize mm -hmm. the chemistry we are about to eat. Mm -hmm. we, if we are carnivores and we have to prey on things that move, mm -hmm. we have to be able to, to see and to act. But more than that, we have to predict uh, what uh, the prey is going to do. I believe in a very strange way, the predator becomes the prey. Pretty, yes. How, how? It knows what the animal does. Oh, so, oh, so oh. We, have the, to, we have to we have to internalize what the, what the prey is. We have to internalize so. and on the basis of that predict. Ah, ah. If it goes down, it's about to jump. So it, it, it brings up the, the very beautiful issue that what evolution has been able to do by trial and error, of course, is to uh, not only uh, define motricity, ability to move, not only uh, uh, define the desire to move, the intentionality, but also the ability to predict. That is, to know what is going to happen next before it actually and happens. And to do that, you have to imagine yourself as it. Absolutely. <laughs> not only that, but you have to imagine, and, and it's very beautiful because when you consider the need here now, the here now, happened already a long time ago. So when right, you, it's too late. So it's too late. So we we actually live a little bit in front of reality. Yeah. yeah. We are continuously predicting what's going to happen next yeah. as we walk. Right. Our foot already goes into it into the ground that it has not appeared yet right, on right. your sensory right. system. Right. 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 So basically the system is continuously projecting. Continuously projecting and making not only a, uh, an image, but an image that we feel. So there is there is the issue of, of uh, uh, the fact that uh, not only do we move in an intelligent way, but you have an, a feeling that we are actually in contact with or we are looking at. So I'm getting subjectivity three, issue. So I'm getting three concepts here, and and they and they relate to each other. We start with intentionality. I need to do something. I need to catch the prey. I need I need to eat. I need to feed or whatever. So it starts with intent. Then I have to predict where that's going to be. So that's the second. And then this subjectivity. I have to feel what that is so I have the right feedback and it, and it all makes sense. So intentionality, predictivity, subjectivity. Subjectivity, right. And then if this is correct, which I think it is, you know, it's a hypothesis, then it basically says something about subjectivity, which is that subjectivity is probably as fundamental as predictivity or the ability to move. And therefore, it must be very primitive. It, it is, you know, this is such a difficult issue because people say, well, you know, of course animals don't have uh, feelings and, uh, you know, only we have feelings and whatever. And, uh, and it is such an absurd posture. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, we, 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 we don't, we want to be beyond animals. We want to be yeah. something very special. But, we, you know, I was saying to you know, some, someone, we don't come with the monkeys. We are monkeys. <laughs> we, are, we have primates, please. You know, the, so there's a slight, slight differences, but that's what we are. Okay, so how is it that we can then be? What is it that, how is this all put together? How did it come to be an evolution? Well, let, let, let's understand these core elements, right. this intentionality, this, uh, this predictivity, and the subjectivity. Now, when we talk about the brain, I mean, we've got to go back to neurons. Neurons, right. the brain is made of neurons. We can't see. They're extremely small. They're how many now in the cortex? 10 billion or 100 billion? I mean, yeah, yeah. there's in the, in the, in the, in the, the tens of billions. Of billions. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so all yeah. these, and then, and then the number of connections they have are yeah, yeah. about 10 to the 10 thousand. To, no, 10 to the 14, 10 to the 15. I mean, Total yeah, number of connections per trillion. Yeah, trillions. Okay. okay. So now with all of that, where is the is the intentionality and the predictivity and the subjectivity? Is that a process? Is that a is that billions of neurons working together, or is it a single? Where, where is it, it happening? It, it is billions of of uh, uh, cells working together, 
to form systems. You know, how many, if you, if you hit uh, a, a, a ball with a bat, how many atoms <laughs> are you actually putting together yeah. with your bat to be able? <laughs> so, you, we make objects. Yes. And the objects can be rigid objects like a bat, or it can be an object which is a functional state inside our head. Right. So, that's what we do inside our head. We actually make objects that are functional, they're dynamic objects. But it, what is the core okay. element? The is core element is the neuron. I mean, the neuron is that which is required in order to have volition, in order to have sensation, in order to have ability to make images of the external world. Okay, so now, and now the question comes, the question of emerging properties. Maybe no cell feels, but when you put together, a miracle happens yeah. and you feel. Okay. Yeah, where's the miracle? Okay, so the question is, uh, well, here, here, uh, we enter into very complicated uh, postures. I think the mechanism, by the way, I, I don't think the brain is that mysterious. I, yeah. I have, well, there, there are unknowns, but there are no mysteries as far as I'm concerned. The core problem at the moment, of course, is quality, is the ability to, to feel the subjectivity issue. One possibility is that subjectivity already exists in single cells, not as an organized uh, subjectivity, but as an irritability, as the ability the cells have to respond, not only electrically, but biochemically at a molecular biological level. And that's what you find is irritability, meaning when something happens to it, it responds that's in some right. way. You and irritate it, and it responds. It responds. So it is mostly related to that. Now, how do you know that? Well, we know that because if we interfere with such entities, we know that subjectivity goes. So we need connectivity, but we need that they should be cells. As you can ask something like, uh, imagine that you were by some machine capable of removing the inside of neurons and leave only the connectivity. How... How far could you walk? How much could yeah. you think? The answer is almost nothing at all. You would be, why? Because the electrical activity of neurons are not just to pass on. The electrical activity of neurons is there to organize internally uh. the molecules that are capable, like, and molecules are not just floating around in, in, in water. And They're almost just, like a liquid crystal is organized. And it's not just for metabolic purposes no. <laughs> to keep the connectivity <laughs> right. going. So That's an important point. That is a very important point. So, so obviously, we are now done anatomy, we've done physiology, we've done synaptic transmission, and we are now coming together put, to put the issue of subjectivity and the issue of molecular events together. Ultimately, it has to be determined by cellularity. There is no extra entity there that can be the center, the ego, the little, <laughs> the little homunculus. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. The same thing that happens with, with force, with muscles. Now, the issue with muscles, of course, is, is very straightforward because you, you move your muscles, you feel it, you feel it, you know when you, it thinks it's contracting. And you know it isn't the properties of the cells. You know if you remove the proteins that allow the muscle to contract the electrical activity does nothing. Sure. So it is the electrical activity plus whatever the cells do. When we're thinking about brain function, that there's such diversity. On the one hand, we can have the music of, of Mozart, an incredible genius that, that, that comes to some young person. On the other hand, we have serious problems, people with uh, Tourette's syndrome that say curse words over and over again that they can't stop. Both the products of the brain. H how is the brain functioning to, to enable these two right. radically uh, yeah. different aspects of human expression? The issue is they're not so different. <laughs> okay. So, what is it that Mozart had? What, why was he so special? You know, obviously, he had the necessary um, cortex and basal ganglia and so on that allowed him to continuously generate this beautiful sequence of sounds that clearly he had in his head. You know, you, you, you hear descriptions of the man simply saying, I, all I do is just, I, I write what I'm hearing. So the, the, the system, the, he, he was born with a particular connectivity such that this kind of transformation of sounds into music and music back into, into motor was easy for him. So 
if, if somebody if, if somebody would say what would you if you could see the brain of Mozart, what would you like to understand? Yeah. Say, I would love to understand the basal ganglia. I would love to yeah, understand good. how he made this beautiful fixed action pattern that flew that it, that flow continuously with such perfection. Yeah. With such I mean it's it is magnificent. Now the fact that you can then hear it is interesting, but the fact that you can make it is yeah, divine. It's, it's, yeah. It, it's just I'm incredible. Evil. And yet, how can a similar kind of organ... Okay. okay, so now let's imagine that one of these organs gets stuck. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, instead of having fixed action patterns that repeat, that, uh, that are organized in, in a, in a well-defined texture, that you have something that starts rotating, let's say, that, that it's, that generates noise because it's improperly connected or it's, uh, some of the cells have suffered and they begin to make little, 80 currents, 80 events. Every, every time that happens, that would generate an abnormal pattern, which then gets converted to the sort of movement that Tourette's people have. Mm. So you see how the two elements are related. Mm. One is the, fun the normally functioning brain. The other one is what happens when the, the system is uh, damaged, is modified. It's, it's the problem of the piano where I have the uh, elements are missing, and then you try to pay, and it's absolutely <laughs> awful. But it's the same system. It is the same system. Uh, and, and, and so pathology is a beautiful way to understand brain function. And of course, pathology is something that we as doctors are there to cure, to make better, so quality of life gets to be better.